presented by Dakota McGuire. Uh, are you online? Or are you here? <laughs> Hi, I'm online. Oh, okay, very good. Um, please, um, the floor is yours. All right, if it's okay with you, I'm gonna share my screen as well, so I can navigate okay. through. Feel free to share. All right. There we go. All right, so I'm Dakota McGuire here at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, and I'll be presenting on a, some work we've been doing on enhancing and validating geonames with digital nautical charts. So we, with uh, digital nautical charts being a polygon layer and geonames being a point layer, there's going to be some differences and cartographic offset versus precise point locations, as well as temporal and spatial variations between the two data sets. For example, DNC, the digital nautical charts objects, they place labels as closely as they can to the actual location without blocking other objects. So the names aren't going to be directly over the actual location. They're going to be slightly off at times. There's also going to be different variations and aliases. So for example, abbreviations and stuff like that. So. This brings up the question, do multiple data sources validate each other and can they add any value when they're combined? And that brings us to our study question. Can we take these digital nautical charts and enhance GeoNames data by, by validating, expanding aliases and filling in any missing data? So to do this, we use textual similarity and spatial proximity to detect instances of ECR text that are within geonames and ones that are not. <clears throat> so digital nautical charts is a substantial long-lived worldwide vector data chart database. It's maintained and created by NOAA and the NGA. And geonames is an open source gazetter with over 27 million geographic names. So you have two data sources here one being government agencies and the other being open source. And when you put the two together here, our study area we chose is the DNC region 17. So the DNC region 17 goes up and down the East Coast from 42 North to 33 North. And you can see the GeoNames objects here are in blue and the DNC objects, which are a subsection of that data set called earth cover text objects. Those are the actual names of the locations are in red here. And you can see some are out in the ocean, but that's to be expected because this is for nautical navigation. And within this data set or within the study area, there's about 14,000 ECR text objects and over 200,000 geonames objects. And here's a brief overview of the methods that we employed. So you have the two G, you have the two data sets. You do we do a little bit of cleanup and normalization, and then we do a distance comparison. We find a, matches within a certain distance, and that gives you that further defines into two data sets of matched by distance and unmatched. And then we go into doing a textual analysis to give four results. So ones that are perfect matches, aliases, potential new data sets, and then uh, objects to be discarded. Now, how do we define pairs and similarity? We can compute the distance between any ECR text object and geonames data pair, and we define that as the closest distance between the point and the bounding polygon between the two data sets. So, a pair is sufficiently close if their distance is less than a threshold that we've determined. And we set that threshold to be 0.5 degrees. And then for the text similarity, we're using trigrams to calculate the similarity between the two different names. And trigrams gives you a value of zero to one. Zero being no, no similarity at all. So for instance, cat to dog to one, which would be dog to dog. 
So one's a perfect match and zero is no similarity at all. And we've defined a threshold of similarity for this to be greater than or equal to 0.8, so an 80% text match. Now getting into the actual workflow, the UCR text first needs to be cleaned and normalized using US chart number one, which is a document used for the digital nautical charts to define any kind of labels or place or design on that. And in that, you'll get a table full of abbreviations. So we use that abbreviation to expand upon ECR text abbreviations. For example, say Prince Edward Island would be Prince Edward I, and then, it, then it's expanded to Prince Edward Island. And that is also created and maintained by the NGA and NOAA. So the first step is then going in to the actual data, taking ECR text and geonames within the distance of 0.5 degrees and creating a, we created a buffer or a concave hall around the ECR text feature. So any geonames that fell within that 0.5 degree uh, buffer were, were classified as reasonable uh, potential matches. And then for the text similarity, once we have those selected, we go in and we use trigrams to find the names of those objects that are within, that are greater than or equal to 80% match. And then unmatched pairs are manually reviewed to be the either disregarded or the remaining ones are potential candidates for new locations to be added to geonames. And we get the four outcomes. So confirming, if you go into this and you look and they have a perfect uh, name match and are within that 0.5 degrees, we're saying that these locations are exactly the, or basically exactly the same and confirming that the geonames is likely accurate. Whereas if you, the, if you look at the pairs and <clears throat> it's sufficiently close distance wise, so within 0.5 degrees, but the name is not perfectly matched. So it's the it's less than uh, one in the tri the trigram similarity, but it's also greater than the greater than or equal to the 0.8 threshold. So these are ones that aren't a perfect match, but they're at least 80% similar. We define those as alternate names or new aliases for existing names. And then we have new potential data to be added to geonames. So here the ECR text is either too distant from any given geonames, or it's close enough, but the text, the name is less than the threshold of 80%. So the interpretation is that ECR text object is too distant or too different to be reasonably associated with an existing geonames location. Those are the new candidates for locations to enhance geonames. And then we have a couple that are discarded. So here they're too far away from geonames or the names just don't match up or the names don't match up or they're within a category in the nautical charts where they're objects like unexploded ordinates. So these are regions in the ocean. They're not really actual locations. It's more warnings to mariners and stuff like that. And they don't have any clear benefit to be added to geonames. So with this, our initial results, we have of the 14,000 ECR, unique ECR text objects and the 200,000 geonames objects, 12,000 of the ECR text objects or 87% of it was confirmed to be in geonames. Whereas 10% though are potentially new or can help improve or help enhance geonames. So of that, we found 2% were aliases, so similar names, but close by. And 1,000, roughly 1,100 or 8% of that were new locations that could be added to geonames. But most significantly, 80%, 87% of the ECR text objects validated geonames locations. 
And then we have the 407 objects that were discarded being those regions such as unexploded ordnance and other warnings in the for navigation. Now, we had a couple challenges with this. So here we have Cape Cod. And you can see there's four geonames text objects that are within roughly 0.5 degrees of each other. And they're called Herring River. Now with, within PCR text, there's only two Herring Rivers here. So we currently have it set up to match the, the closest ones. So as you can see here, these are actually there, or they're paired with the ECR text objects. But we need to go and validate that they're actually, these are actually supposed to be matching to these and not these ones over here. We have to figure out which uh, names actually coincide with what points. So this doesn't come up often, but it does come up, come up sometimes where I have to go in and actually validate that these locations are actually there in the geo names or you see our text objects. So for ongoing work, we'll be adding a completionary step because there is some duplication across the earth cover ECR text libraries within digital, nauti digital nautical charts. There's four levels of resolution there. So if we add a conflationary step there that can alleviate some of the duplication. And then we want to look at other some or other methods for text similarity. So looking at Levenstein word embedding and how they compare to trigrams and performance. And then potentially looking at adding open street source or open street maps as a third source. So adding some more uh, aliases in there, potentially adding more frequent name changes, duplicated entries, something that's a little bit dirtier than these uh, data sets that are highly curated. All right, any questions? Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Then with that, we can uh, uh, end the session. Please uh, join me to thank all.